Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store. Today we're out and about checking out Canon's latest 600 and 800 RF lens. When I first heard about these lenses, great, we have a 600mm lens and an 800mm lens that's affordable, and then you hear f11, and your jaw just kind of drops. You're like, ah, oh, I can't shoot f11, I'm a 2.8 snob. I want the fastest, biggest, brightest lens I can possibly get. Big lenses like that come at a cost, financially, but they also are much heavier as well. So can you get decent results from an f11 lens? And that's what I'm really curious to try out today. When we think about an f11 lens or shooting a lens at f11 we think a really broad depth of field and in a lot of lenses especially the wider angle lenses f11 everything's in focus but on a big telephoto like this we are compressing the image so much that we actually can still achieve a fairly decent depth of field if you take a look at these really exciting fence posts i shot here they're probably about eight to ten feet apart but you can still achieve a really nice natural looking depth of field with them yeah keep in mind how you use this lens is going to make a world of difference if i have a lot of space behind my subject i'm going to get that shallower depth of field yeah take a look at this shot here where it's a much busier background. I'm not able to blow out the background nearly as much as I was able to fence post because I'm in a much tighter shooting environment. Depth of field is one aspect of photographing with a lens at f11, but more importantly, especially with a 600 and an 800 millimeter lens, is achieving the proper shutter speed. Now, what I'm finding is on a bright sunny day like today, I'm doing okay, but earlier this morning when we were shooting and light was a little more suspect, the shutter speeds were a little more troublesome. I had to boost my ISO quite a bit to get the results I wanted. Now, modern day cameras, especially cameras like this R5, are able to handle higher ISOs much better than we were in the past, so I can easily deal with that. And I'd much rather have a sharp shot with proper shutter speed and deal with some grain rather than dealing with the motion blur, which comes in very early with a lens like this. For those of you who are thinking of using this lens indoors, I'd say forget about it. It's not a lens designed for that whatsoever. The F11 is going to thwart you when it comes to indoor lighting and your eyes are always going to be through the roof. Where this lens is going to shine is outside when you have a lot of space and a lot of light to capture some really good results. Both of these lenses share a lot of similarities and one of them is image quality. Now, I wasn't expecting a lot from these lenses, to be honest. You know, F11, and, you know, they're not L-series lens. But both of these lenses are capable of delivering some really nice results, even with a really high-resolution camera like this R5. I'm really able to achieve some really nice level of detail on the shots that I'm doing. And think about if you're a birder, for instance, where you really want those feathers and every little detail to pop. And you can achieve those results with this lens. In both of these lenses, the chromatic aberration is really well handled. We also have really nice fast autofocus with the STM motors. Take a look at these examples here of how the autofocus performs. It's easily able to track sports and action, but also it's very snappy between min and max. I also like how quiet the autofocus is. If you're lucky enough to get close enough to an animal that you might spook it with an older autofocus system, you're not with a lens like this. This photo was shot with a two-time teleconverter on the 800mm, giving me a 1600mm lens at f22. I like that you can put a 1.4-time teleconverter or a 2-time teleconverter with both of these lenses. And the cameras will autofocus at f22, although it is a bit more sluggish. I wasn't convinced these were the best results I could get, certainly not handheld. So when we went back, we did further testing, and I was able to achieve slightly better results. Now, if you really want to go extreme, with the R5 and R6, you can put them into crop mode, giving you an additional 1.6 crop factor. So we've left the prairies, and we've worked our way through the foothills, and now we're into the mountains trying to find whatever elusive animals that we can find today. And I have to admit, I really enjoy the size and weight of these lenses. I don't have this giant 600 or 400 2.8, something like that, that I have to take in and out of the truck constantly. These are much more hand-holdable lenses. And I like how Canon has designed them, that they're very compact when they're not being used. To use both of these lenses, it's very easy. Simply twist the lock ring, extend the barrel out, lock it back in place, and you're good to go. When you compact this one, for instance, this is the 600 and it's 26 centimeters, the 800 is a bigger lens and it comes into about 35 centimeters. It's really great that you can fit these lenses into a standard camera bag. When it comes to shooting these ultra-long telephoto lenses, 600s and 800s, stability is a key factor in getting sharp shots. Now, thankfully, Canon has included a 5-stop stabilization system in the 600 and a 4-stop stabilization system in the 800. And that's going to help you out quite a bit. Uh, but 
you still need to address how you're going to shoot and hold this camera to get the best results. Hand holding a camera like this, I always refer back to sort of what I call like the, the rule of focal lengths. And the general rule for me is that my shutter speed should match my focal length. So with an 800 millimeter lens for still life, I should be able to hand hold this at one eight hundredth of a second. Now give me four stops of stabilization and I can shoot significantly lower than that, but I like to keep that as kind of a guideline. On top of the stabilization, I really want to do all that I can for this system to get the best quality shots with the most stable platform. Both these lenses do have a quarter 20 thread on the bottom where you can put in a monopod or hook it up to a tripod. Now it doesn't allow you to rotate like a tripod collar does on many of their other lenses. I also find when I'm shooting with these lenses to support them, either put my hand on top, right, do everything I can to to give a really nice stable base for these cameras to achieve the best results. We've actually had some pretty good luck today finding some animals. So here we just have some deer in the background and this brings up a good point. We've also had this crazy fog just roll in on us in the last 10 minutes. It's been insane. When you're shooting with long telephoto lenses like this, the environmental factors certainly come into play. We don't really have the factor today of heat. But if you're shooting on especially slick sporting fields or long highways and what have you with a lot of heat waves uh, transferring from the ground up, it's really going to affect your image quality because you can't just get a clean shot through all of that haze. Here with the fog, I'm limited to how far I can shoot because I just can't see that far. My visibility isn't that great. So it's something to take into account when you're shooting with big long telephotos like this. When it comes to the build and design of both these lenses, it's important to know a few things. First off, they're not a weather sealed lens and that helps attribute to the price point that these lenses come in at. Externally on these lenses, we do have a focusing limiting switch, which I quite like. If I know that my subject is beyond a certain range, I don't have to worry about the camera trying to focus. Now it's important to know too, on the 800 millimeter, the closest focusing distance is actually six meters. So you're definitely using this lens for something far away from you. And like the other RF lenses, it does have the multifunction ring, which allows you to customize this lens even more so. This lens does feature a 95 millimeter filter thread. So if you want to put a UV filter on, you certainly can. Although out of the box, it does not come with a hood. That is an optional accessory. Overall, I've really enjoyed shooting these two lenses today. The results I'm getting are very pleasing and I wasn't thrown off nearly as much as I thought with an F11 aperture lens. You can achieve some really nice depth of field shots with this lens, even though it's F11, if you have enough space to work with it. And that's where this lens lives. Outside on a bright sunny day is where it's gonna achieve its best results. The other thing I find with this lens is that image stabilization really helps you out, but it's not gonna save every shot. You need to be as stable as you possibly can. Employ a monopod, use a tripod, whatever you can, a fence post, whatever you need to stabilize this lens. But I wanna know what you guys think of this lens. Do you like the retractable barrel design? Do you like the F11 lens for this price point and the quality results we're getting out of it? Make sure you leave comments down below. Follow us both on Instagram and please subscribe, hit the notification bell. We'll catch you again next time. Hey, thanks for sticking around in this crazy episode of All the Weather Changes. If you want to check out our latest episode, click up here. And if you're Canadian and want to shop local, check out the camera store down here.